Now we'll go to the important section of the company, which is like adding company accounting details. Okay. Now an important point here that this currency, what you see here is the functional currency or the operational currency in which they do the business. Okay. As I'm setting up a US company, so the, obviously the currency becomes is US dollars here or USD. It's an Indian company, the currency would have been INR. Hong Kong company, the company currency would have been HKD. This is in which they do business, their functional currency. Okay. But it can be, if you want to translate the data, we can do so by putting a different currency here, translation currency. Suppose I have, um, like I am situated in Europe. Okay. And my business is spread across different parts of the world, but the headquarters is in Europe. And anytime any Indian company generates revenue or losses, I want to see that number in Euro. So that's how you can put the Euro currency here and it will translate the balance into Euro also for you. Yeah. Translation currency, it's very simple. If I'm the parent company, I'm situated in the Europe or US and I want to numbers in US dollars only, doesn't matter you made 100 millions in INR, but that's very few for me in US dollars. Okay, so that currency you can put here in the translation. The other important point, once you put a currency here, that you have done a transaction or use a control rule set here, value here, then you won't be able to change this company currency. So be very cautious, be very alert when you put the company currency here. Obviously, this detail will come from client only, but sometimes you are human, right? Like it's not for sometimes you are humans, right? We make mistakes. And uh, when we make mistakes, we can make uh, things worse. So that's why this is section that whenever you set up the company in your projects or in your future career, make sure you put the right currency. If you have done any transaction after putting the currency here, you won't be able to change this currency at all. So it's very important that you change the currency. So you put the right currency in the system and later on you will not be able to change it. So it's very clear. Either you've done a manual transaction like any customer invoice, supplier invoice or any accounting journal or you have used a control rule set or assign the accounting to this company. Then also you will not be able to change it. I'll give a demo here. You can select multiple currency like Euro, GBP, HKD, INR, mm -hmm. JQI. Okay. You can put multiple currencies here. But this currency would be only one, the translation or the operational currency. This can be only one. Now, let's come back here. Let's talk about important configuration. This is the, like the core of accounting and uh, for company. So we have to finish in the right way. Now, fiscal schedule. Fiscal schedule is nothing, is nothing but just your financial year. Okay. It's just your financial year. Like for India, we have uh, April to March. For US companies, it would be Jan to December. So in birthday terminology, we call it as a fiscal schedule. Let's see if we have any fiscal schedule here. So we have standard corporate schedule and Gauri and Priti, let me just open this one more time. We'll spend some time here, like 10 minutes in all these configurations. So as you can see that these are nothing but your financial years. Right now we are in 2022 and I can see that no one has created a fiscal year. Okay. For 2022. So we have this is a good opportunity for us also to create fiscal year. The task is create next fiscal year. Create next fiscal year. 
there's no schedule like what is the schedule for which you want to create next year and it's standard corporate schedule Okay, as you can see, because if you see the fiscal schedule in there, we had clicked on the one checkbox auto populate fiscal periods. So, uh, Preeti, we call months as periods in our work. So, Jan, Feb, March, we don't call them as months typically when we work in day to day. We call them as like open the period for March, open the period for April, open the period for like. Uh, this month and so on. So you can just period. Months don't typically use. Now we'll give it as standard. Okay. I will go back to my fiscal schedule. Okay. Here you would see it will show 2022 also now. So that be good. Now let me just hide this. is nothing but your collection of your ledger accounts. Let me first pick the existing value here. Then I'll show you how to create your own. We'll use corporate here. The corporate and different tab here. Now, Priti and Gauri see this account set is nothing but a place where we have stored all of our ledger accounts. Okay, like cash, money market, and their type. It belongs to asset, equity, liability, income, expense, whatever category it is. Mm -hmm. See those categories here. Now, this is an existing one. What if you want to create something from scratch? Very easy. Create account set. Now we'll give it an account set name. Uh, let's say test. Okay. If this is a parent chart of account or parent account set, then you can include a ch child account set also from here. Let's say normally we don't create ledger accounts or add ledger accounts in our parent account or we call it account set. We only create ledger accounts or add ledger accounts in the child account sets, not in the parent account set. That's a like work day, uh, suggestion also and methodology also. I'm not sure why, but this is they have done it. So they have done it, and this is how they want it as well. Now I'm just creating a test one only. And if I hit a plus button here, give a number. So I'll give a number called 1000 here. Account name is cash. Ledger account type, if it's an asset, liability, equity, income, expense, okay. Means if, suppose you want to restrict this ledger account to use with a specific company only, then you can give that company name here and restrict it. For example, if I say GMS USA, means this ledger account can only be used with GMS USA transaction is only and nothing else. You can add more companies here. There's no such restriction here. Okay. And if you want to retire this account means you want to inactivate this account, click on this checkbox and it will inactivate this ledger account. If you want users not to use it for any other company and so on, we can multiple ways. But this is also one way that don't 
can use it only with GMS USA only, yeah. Twitter only, with nothing okay. else. And just like this, somebody has created this account set called uh, corporate mm-hmm. and several leather accounts. No need to uh, do this. Mm-hmm. The page got refreshment, no need to worry. Word, one person could handle only one module. Suppose I am working as a consultant, then either I am working on a P2P, R2, composite report, settlement, or this, uh, what do you call it? Uh, expense model, payroll model, or with any specific model. I will not be working on uh, multiple things. Now, that's a methodology of big forms. But what's happening with these days to save the cost? Companies like Allied, they are putting the resources into multiple projects. Okay, yeah. so they have to work maybe sometimes like two projects or three projects simultaneously. That become makes very their life very you know hectic and painful. They only give only one module to one person, one consultant. Okay, they easily digest the information or can work on this because in big form the, the deadlines are very critical and short. And you have to deliver things very fast in comparison to working with a client or someone else. And you have to be near toes all the time. So mm-hmm. that's only one module to one person. But uh, in other small boutique companies or less uh, consulting firms, they give you two, three projects simultaneously to handle. So now I'll quickly select first values here. Handle it okay. And then we'll come here. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about all these changes. Now oh, it's done. Now come back. Now you see, earlier this was available for us to change. But as I have assigned a control group set, it's not editable anymore. If I have to do that, the moment you take out control rule set, it becomes available to for you to change. Okay. Okay. Now, talk about this fiscal schedule. Fiscal schedule is nothing but your financial year. It's a place where we create the leather accounts. Mm-hmm. That we would be using transactions. Suppose I am working for a US company. We are a subsidiary form of US parent farm. They have their own account set, but we don't follow them. Mm. We have taken their master account set, but we have their, our own account set that we will be using. Okay. For posting transactions and so on. So account control rule set is nothing for your manual journals. Okay. So in workday, you create journals for two ways. Okay. Now in workday, you generate accounting through two ways. One is your uh, operational journals and second manual journals. Now, what is our operational journal? Anytime you create a customer invoice, supplier invoice, okay, mm. that creates an accounting or journal or accounting automatically. It would be using account posting rules. I'll come to that after this. <laughs> but suppose you have month end entries, you have to post month end adjustment journal. Or accrual journals or some other journals for any X, Y, Z reason. There can be anything in real world. Okay, you have reversals, accruals. Then you use manual journals. Create general task is the task. For that, we use this control rule set. What that does, we give a threshold amount here. That anytime 
if the amount is greater than 500 that would require an approval if i use this treasury account in my manager journal and my journal line amount where i've used this treasury account is more than 500 not 500 it should be more than 500 500 1 502 anything but more than 500 then that should go for a review and approval so that's the purpose of account control rule set that's all and if you want to create yours easy create account control rule set and then you get the account set from which we can pull the ledger accounts, a currency, and then you can start the threshold amount here. Okay, yeah. Got like it. cash, bank, whatever you want. This one not going to this right now. It's pretty easy. So no need to create one. Let's use the existing one and save some time. Now, this is account posting rule set. Now here, see, these are the categories or the sections for which the operational journal will get created. So anytime I'm doing any activity related to cash, that will use this ledger accounts and so on. So these are the different categories of operational journals. Okay, like mm -hmm. your receivables, your revenue, your spend. Okay, and by default, Bhakti has given an explanation here that what kind of ledger account you should use here. The revenue posting rules identify the accounts that you should use as an item. Typically, an income account. Very clearly, it's telling you that if you have created an income account which belongs to revenue, that you should put here. Now, this management fee revenue, and this is how it works. So, first of all, system will come. Okay, for revenue transactions. Anytime I create a revenue transaction, means I sell something to a customer. Okay, I created a customer invoice. The system will come here. First, it will check this table here. That the revenue category is it intercompany service, shared resources? No. Okay, let me go further. Any revenue category which is interest income? No. Suppose this is interest income in my customer invoice. Then it will post the entry to 8,000. This ledger account, interest account. Suppose any of the revenue category is not matching what I have used in the customer invoice. Then system say, okay, fine. I did not find anything in the rule condition here. But let me go to the header. And then it will pick this default ledger account if it doesn't find anything here, which is matching as per the rule. And suppose if you have not even put the default ledger account here, which is not a best practice, Ideally, when we create the ledger accounts or this account control rule set, account posting rule set, we define the ledger accounts that, okay, maybe if some new revenue category has been set up by someone else and so on. So by default, if you don't find a revenue category, you come here and you put the transaction to assign the transaction to this ledger account. System will start from here, the first row, we'll check the dimensions one by one. Okay, let me check this, let me check this, okay. I did not find anything which is matching. Now let me go to the header. System will come here and say, okay, there's a default ledger account, let me put it here. Suppose forgot putting a default ledger account also. Okay, then system will throw the operation journal into error. Clear on this? And this is also pretty easy, damn easy. You say create account posting rule set. And here you go. You can create your own account posting rule. Name, then account set like your ledger account set, and you will get this page like this. I'll show you one. Test account set corporate. And then will also be just named like corporate only. Then you get this categories automatically here, but you have to go to each category, and now you have to define this default ledger account, like for example, this one. Deposition. Then you have to give a default ledger account here. I'm just making it up, right? but it has to be as per the client requirements. Client will give you specific requirements that for this transaction, this should be the ledger account. And that's why we have SITs and UATs. 
to test the entire functionality. Without this configurations, the system will create the accounting of the transaction that we will be doing in the future. After that, the important feature is this general reversal options. Mm -hmm. We we'll talk about this uh, as and when we progress. Not right now; it's not required anymore. But uh, right now, this is not required because we are talking about the basic level first. Once we have experience, we can come to the other features here, which is not required right now. Okay. The other thing which we definitely should do is journal reversals. Suppose I have reversed my journal. Okay, I have cancelled the transaction. Okay, so what it means is reverse debit and credit means that whatever let's account we had used at the debit place and the credit place reverse them. Suppose I had used a thousand let's account one zero 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 cash at debit place and let's account three thousand at the credit place. Now, if I select this first option, what it will do is once I cancel my transaction, it will reverse them. So the ledger account one thousand which was debited, now it will be credited, and three thousand which was debited, credited, it will be debited now. Second option says keep debit, credit, and reverse the sign. Means don't move their places. Let one thousand be at the debit place only, three thousand be at the credit place only, but reverse reverse the sign. So normally credits are in bracket, right? So three okay. thousand which was in bracket now, put that bracket in front of that account one thousand now. Okay. And ninety nine point nine nine percent companies worldwide take this first option only. Okay. 